So now that I've got my full profile view of shear line and uh, keel line, I'm going back to my original drawing of the forms, the profiles of the forms, and I'm going to use what uh, they describe in the book as using a tick stick. So rather than using a ruler to measure up to a point on a buttock line or out on a water line, because then you have to sort of remember those dimensions, it's a lot easier to just use what he calls a tick stick, and that's making your own little ruler. I'm currently working on form number five. I've already done one through four um, and transfer them to a new piece of paper. So what I've drawn out is a new uh, plotted line of water lines and buttock lines because this piece of paper is getting pretty confusing and the lines have been erased and moved. So I'm going to work on number five. So on buttock line number one, I measure up. In this case, I'm going to measure down from the designated water line. We just put a little tick mark there, and then we take this little mark and transfer it to a new pattern. So at this point, I'm just going to take the various measurements on form number five off of my original body plan view, which was created from the patterns taken from inside the boat and transfer them all to a new set of plans. Okay, so form number five does not touch buttock line number 10. So to add the lines in here, I start to take some water line measurements from center line. I'm gonna start with, I think I've got a, enough lines through here. Start with uh, water line seven, eight, and nine. So I'll continue to draw the buttock lines for pattern number five, and then I will add in some water lines to add more points so that I can accurately draw the pattern for form number five. Just so we can show, you can also add some points on the diagonals. There's points very near them anyways, but just to demonstrate, back to the original drawing. So on diagonal number one, measuring out, should fall right there, which looks pretty well in line with the curve. The other thing I should point out on my new body plan is that I have the center line and I have patterns for forms number one, two, and three on the left side of the center line and I'm putting patterns four, five, and the transom on the right side of center line just to separate them, give a little more clarity to the forms. Angle number three, I get a point way offline here. So then I begin to wonder what's happened there and I noticed that I've drawn my diagonal from the center line at 11 through 11 and 8 here when it's supposed to be through 11 and 9. This line should come through this point here, therefore it obviously makes a mistake. And so I need to correct that. So now that I've got my diagonal on the right angle basically, and I measure we're using my tick stick on that line, this point now falls in what would be a natural curve. So these are all a matter of you know double checking your numbers, double checking your lines. If one of these points looks way off, either you measured incorrectly, you've written something down incorrectly, so it is a checks and balances between drawing your body plan, drawing your profile view. And I'm not going to take the shear height off of the original drawing I made. I'm going to take it off of the profile view here, which is more corrected because I've got a nice fair line running down through. So again, I'm going to take it down to water line, which right here is number three, just for argument's sake. We'll go The water line is right there, or shear line I should say is right there. I then just flip this paper back and measure up from the water line here. And shear line for number five should be right in here. 
I will check that. I've got so many marks on my tick sticks. Make sure I've used the correct line. I can use a different side of the stick. points and just draw a line across from the center line out we mark that as number five shear then it's time to drive my nails in See how we end up with a nice fair curve. Pretty happy with that, so we'll draw form number five. It's missing a few nails by a 32nd, but I think that's the tolerances I can live with. Now, I'm not so sure that this actually gets pulled in to those because there is a bit of flare on the top. So I'm going to leave it out a bit and draw up to shear line number five. And there we have all five patterns, the internal patterns of the Ken Douglas. So now that I have a newer drawing of the body plan from either corrected numbers off the table of offsets or from some markings or some measurements off of the profile view, it's now time to go back to the profile view and start to add in some more of the buttock line. So we're looking at my model in the last video. We're going to start to add in these lines by cross, by cutting through the buttock lines in the boat and adding them to the profile view. So different slices of the boat in the profile view. So with my tick stick, I've picked up heights on the various forms from the body plan, transferred them, done put my nails in, and we have a pretty good uh, line here, nice fair curve line regarding buttock number three on this particular one. And then we'll have to pick up where it hits the transom, transom and stem. So now back to the profile view, I have got in the transom, I've got in the keel, I have the outer rabbit line drawn in, which is this line here. And then I started to look at some of the buttock lines. Buttock one, two, one through uh, three are so close together on the bottom of the boat that I didn't see a, uh, a need to draw those out. What I do have though is buttock four, five, six, seven, and eight drawn from through from the transom all the way through and then where they meet up with the shear line. So these points measuring up on station number five come off of either the table of offsets or the corrected version of my body plan which we'll get back to. So we mark these points on station five, four, three, two and one. 
measure up, run a batten through those and see how fair or smooth the line is through there. If they need smaller corrections, as we noted before, if this line is off and I need to move a point here or there, then I, I measure that up from the baseline again, take it back to my body plan, make a small change there, then see how the line fares out curved on my body plan. I've also added in, just because I took a pattern, I took a pattern from the boat, I've added in the stern post, which is attached to the hog on the bottom of the boat and the transom itself. It really is hard to show in the larger frame all of the lines on this nine foot piece of paper. So hopefully you get a picture of all of these buttock lines. So now that I have all of the uh, buttock lines drawn on my profile view on the large nine foot piece of paper, I can now come back to my body plan and you can see when I made the second copy here, I have the center line of the boat here. I have stations one, two and three drawn on the left side and four, five and transom on the right side. I have my diagonal lines drawn through the corrected points. I've also added in, because I had the patterns and the, the little pointers when I glued the, the, the sort of sticks, pointy sticks to the patterns when I originally took them inside the boat, I knew that that was the top of the planking from the inside. So I have also drawn these points here as to where approximately each plank, the top of each plank lands on the forms. And another thing I can do on the body plan at this point is to draw in the keel. Now we know the keel is an inch and a quarter wide, so I'm taking half of that, and a five eighths, and putting it on either side of center, and then I'm just, I just drew a line up on either side of the center to meet with the bottom of the transom here, and I know the maximum depth of the keel is at the transom line down here. Then I can also, from the table of offsets that I had drawn, from my patterns or that I took off the boat and measurements off the boat, I know that at each station the keel is so high. So I can see that I got station four, three, two, and one. So the keel at, at station three would be this deep, station two a little less, a little less, so the keel is not as high in, in, in those areas. Then I also know from the patterns that I took, where is the outer bearding line? And that's gonna to help to determine sort of where the actual pattern or form that I'm gonna to cut to build this boat meets at the center line. And the reason for that is, so I've got a little fit here or a little template. This would be the thickness of the planking, 3 8 So if I measure up from the bottom of the keel, say for example on station number four here, and it is two inches up, that's where the, the uh, outer rabbit line was. I then take the thickness of my planking, which would go on there, and lay that on that point, and then draw another line. That is where the inside of, say, stay, in this case, station number four, would land on the keel. So again, here's where you can make a few small corrections in the patterns before I was to cut them out and actually build the boat, and that is, does this line come down, where does it hit the keel? So I've moved a few of these marks up a little bit higher and then retrace my lines through to come through here so that I know that this pattern or all these patterns are to the inside of the planking, adjusting for the thickness of the planking and making sure that the outer rabbit line is in the right position. This one comes in on you know quite a flat, but we go up to station number one, it comes in on quite an angle. So what's going to help us also is not only to find the outer bearding line on here, but if we measure the distance between uh, here and this point, I will know, I will be able to mark on the keel where is the inner bearding line as well. So all of these measurements and marks and patterns help us to determine all the points on the keel, on the forms, where the planking lands, what angle it's coming in, and it will also help us when we lay down the planking onto the transom, when we look at other profiles as to how, these, how the transom needs to be beveled so that the planking would land nice and flat on the transom itself. I hope this video has been useful and informative for you. 
My first video was uploaded to YouTube in 2013 and in all of these years I've uploaded 140 videos primarily on how to build wooden boats, how to repair them, how to restore them. I only started to put ads or allow ads to be onto my videos about six months ago. I don't make a big fortune making videos. I really do this to help the community and be an informative site for boat builders, amateurs, and even those that have had more experience. So please check out my website, that's orcaboats.ca. There you will find some photos of some work I've done. I do custom boat builds, small row boats, canoes, kayaks. I do restorations on old boats. I sell kits for canoes, kayaks. And on top of that, also doing new builds for customers.